Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of Christ the King for this, our second Sunday in Easter. For those who may not know me yet, my name is Austin. I'm the rector here. And our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 1 of your bulletins or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. From the Psalter this morning, we'll be reading Psalm 133, responsibly by half verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like fine oil upon the head, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing.
A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and to declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, our Christ. Please be seated. We can still hear the wind outside, can't we? <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning. And again, welcome. It's wonderful to have you with us here for our second Sunday of Easter. Our readings this morning remind me of when my children were younger. They had a hard time when someone had wronged them, accepting apologies. And we would often hear in our house, I don't forgive you. (laughs) And it's something that is very honest. In that moment, they couldn't. And it took them some time. And eventually, when they came to forgive, they were able to rejoin the, the small family community and go back to normal. But it's part of who we are. It takes time to process things. We hear in our gospel reading this morning, Jesus breathing on them and saying, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And I think this really speaks to the condition of our hearts and our experience in the world. When we hold on to the hurts of others, they become a part of us. When we retain those sins of others, they are retained because we take them into ourselves and let them become a part of who we are. Whereas when we forgive, we allow those things to go. They don't rest on our hearts. We're freed from them. And that kind of forgiveness is what is being talked about in our gospel. As the disciples are being sent out now in Jesus' name, no longer two by two to shake off the dust from their shoes if the town doesn't receive them, but now to go out with the gospel of reconciliation, to bring forgiveness and healing and peace, restoration. That's part of what we are called to continue to do as Christ's followers, to be reconcilers in our world, in our relationships, in our communities, to let go of those hurts that poison us, 
and rest heavily on our hearts and to find ourselves freed, filled again with God's life-giving breath, that Holy Spirit that sustains us, that continues to give us life. As we also hear in this morning's gospel, Thomas wasn't with them when Jesus first came. And when the disciples tell him, much as Mary Magdalene had told them, I have seen the Lord, he can't believe it's true. But instead of just saying, oh, that's great, he says, unless I see the holes and put my fingers in the holes in his hands, and put my hand in that hole in his side, I won't believe. He voices his doubt. And a week later, when Christ is again amongst them, he receives his personal invitation. Come, put your fingers in my hands and see. Put your hand in my side. Don't doubt, but believe. And Thomas doesn't go up and stick his fingers in the holes in his hands or put his hand in his side. He says, my Lord and my God. As we're looking at our second reading this morning, John tells us that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And it's these unspoken things that we keep within us. Thomas serves as an example of allowing those things to have voice, to speak them aloud, to acknowledge in ourselves when we have concerns or doubts or fears, and that by sharing them, we allow God the opportunity to work in us and through us, to alleviate those doubts, those fears, to allow us to be whole in relationship. As important as it is to forgive and let go of the hurts that others put on us, it is equally important to admit our own hurts, to admit our own fears, our doubts, to give them voice and air, to let them go and find our hearts lightened. The second Sunday of Easter is often called the reading of Doubting Thomas. But what we have in Thomas is an example of integrity, of authenticity, of allowing himself the freedom to voice what he's feeling. I wasn't here when this amazing thing happened to you. How can I believe it? We watched him die on the cross. We watched him laid in the tomb. What you're saying is too wonderful to believe without seeing it for myself. And so then he's given the gift of getting to see it for himself. And as Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Each of us is invited into community, invited into relationship with each other as our whole selves, in authenticity, with integrity to who we are, with all the baggage that we carry with us from the wounds of our world, and to be able to give voice to those and to allow ourselves the opportunity to heal, to find ourselves in community <laughs> where we can support those who are hurting and where we can also be supported when we are hurting. The second Sunday of Easter is an invitation into that space of allowing ourselves to be who we are, of allowing ourselves that vulnerability to let others in, to let God in, to find ourselves healed, lightened, renewed, and to find that breath of life reinvigorating us. May we follow in Thomas's footsteps in that regard and find ourselves willing, vulnerable, able to speak our hurts, our doubts, our fears, and find ourselves strong in community, no longer hiding behind those walls that we put up to protect ourselves but finding ourselves instead forgiven, healed, renewed, and reconciled in relationship to each other, to ourselves, and to God.
Amen. Together let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, as found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. God of resurrection and life, in this season of celebration and joy, we pray for your church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. As we carry the joy of Eastertide into our troubled and uncertain world, utilize us during this season of resurrection to be your agents of compassion, reconciliation, and love. God of resurrection and life. God of justice and hope, we pray for our nation and for all the nations of the world. As we rise with Christ in this season from the darkness of winter in the tomb into the light and life of spring and resurrection, guide us into reconciliation, peace, and unity across barriers of politics language, color, and creed. May our world leaders, elected, appointed, and otherwise, strive for justice and equity and serve the common good. Inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of justice and hope. God of creation and new life. We pray for all parts of this sacred earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for oceans and dry land, for oxygen renewing plant life, for animals and all things that creep, swim, and fly, and for the breath of life that surrounds us. As the hands and heart of our resurrected Christ in our world, remind us of our interdependence with the earth and our calling to love, serve, and care for all that you have made. God of creation and new life. God of reconciliation and love, 
We pray for hope and equity in this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces, for all impacted by hatred or injustice. As we continue to encounter our resurrected Christ in our world today, kindle in each of us a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of reconciliation and love. I pray for your protection, safety, wisdom, and guidance for all police officers and first responders, thanksgiving for their work. I pray for protection, safety, wisdom, and guidance for all firefighters, especially our Vata Fire Station 5 and Battalion Chief Matt Oser, thanksgiving for their work. God of healing and care, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those suffering from poverty or infirmity, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice, both for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family. As we are bid to rise to new life in Christ, Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit to seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of healing and care. God of respite and eternal life. We pray for those who have died, for saints in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who are called who call us to racial reconciliation for martyrs who died because of hatred, for departed victims of COVID-19, and for all the communion of saints. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in life. God of respite and eternal life. God of blessing and abundance, we give thanks for the blessings of our lives and hearts that give us hope, peace, blessing, grace, and fill us with love. Amidst this time of Easter celebration and joy, let us offer our thanksgiving. God of blessing and abundance, abundance. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and divisions cease. As we rise with Christ to new life in this season of mystery and hope, make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear extended Christ the King family, the peace of the risen Christ be with you.
Well, one more good morning to you all. And peace to our folks at home. It's good to have you with us. Um, one quick announcement for Frank in the back. Um, Frank, if we lose power, uh, will you hit record so that we can get the rest of the service and post it later? Sorry. If we lose power, will you hit record so that we get the rest of the service to post later? Yes, I can just do it now. Or no, just if we lose power. <laughs> okay. We're good for the moment. <laughs> We do have some announcements for this morning that are also printed in your bulletins. Open plate offering this Sunday, all non-designated funds in the collection plate will go to Ralston House in support of our Pinwheel Garden as we recognize April Child Abuse Prevention Month. And Mary, would you like to say anything about the pinwheels? Sure. Do you want me to go up there? Right? That'd be great. Then people at home can hear you as well. <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you can use mine if you want. <laughs> All right. So you've already heard my spiel several times, so I'll keep my speech to about 15 minutes. If that's <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you have always been very generous to uh, helping Ralston House and planting our pinwheel garden. We had Boy Scouts plant the garden yesterday, and I thought, as I arrived this morning, I would see no pinwheels here, but but they're still planted out there if you haven't seen them. Anyway, Ralston House is a child advocacy center, and uh, kids who have made an outcry of uh, of abuse, sex abuse, and witness violence, uh, witness uh, domestic violence, anything anything that they uh, would cause them. Uh, be considered abuse with, uh, with these kids. Anyway, just a few uh, statistics here. And one in six girls is sexually abused before the age of 18, and one in 12 boys. So it's something that we would like to uh, do away with. <laughs> so the, the pinwheels out in front is just to make the community aware that this is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and we would like if all possible, there would be no more, more child abuse, but that's not the case. But just uh, an example of some of the things that, that Ralston House does. Kids are interviewed there. That's kind of the first step in the investigation. We also provide medical uh, exams for kids free of charge. We have a pediatric, uh, well, a pediatrician and then a pediatric nurse that are both trained in uh, child abuse and child. So a lot of that is not just that they do the exam, but also they speak with the kids and assure them their bodies are still okay. Anyway, I've been volunteering there for 16 years, so I feel very strongly about that organization. So thank you for supporting Ralston House. Thanks, Mary. How much is a pinwheel? Oh, uh, pinwheel for $5. But when our open offering, whatever we get, we'll plant more pinwheels out there. Fabulous. Thanks. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> very nice. We do have a brief executive committee meeting this morning. Um, I think if you all can meet me just at the door after um, I greet people on their way out, we'll have a quick meeting then because I know that um, our treasurer needs to leave a little bit early today, or I think he does. Um, other things in our announcements, Monday the 8th at 10 a.m. is Crafters of the King in the Parish Hall. At 4.30 p.m. we do have our Believe Out Loud meeting, and the link will be going out for that today. Um, and at 7 p.m. is our Cairo Bell Choir rehearsal. Tuesday the 9th at 11.30 a.m. we have our What is Contemplative Prayer in hybrid. That's for those who would like to come and take part in contemplative prayer, but maybe haven't done it before or have questions about it. So that half hour is an opportunity to answer, uh, ask those questions and have them answered. At noon, we'll actually do contemplative prayer, so you can put your new skills to use. Uh, at 1230, we have Bible study. Um, these are all in hybrid on Tuesday. 
Bible study, we're going to continue our reading through the first book of Kings. And at 3.30 p.m. is St. Clair's dinner. Wednesday the 10th, 10.30 a.m., we have worship committee, and that's in hybrid. Our healing service follows at noon, and that's also in hybrid. 6.45 p.m. is our finance meeting on Zoom, and 8.30 p.m. is Compline on Zoom. Thursday at 8, we have breakfast at the Rising. At 3 p.m., we have our book club on Zoom, We're continuing to read How to Be Brave by Marianne Budd. And at 7 p.m., our Worshiping Voices uh, choir rehearsal. Friday at 8 a.m. is morning prayer on Zoom. And coming up soon on Saturday the 20th at 5.45 p.m., we have our next family movie night. It's an opportunity to gather and have some fellowship and fun. Uh, we have free popcorn and snacks. Invite families to come. Um, on the 20th, we'll be watching Wally. And that's in honor of Earth Day, which is on the 21st. Clergy conference is coming up at the end of the month, April 29th to May 1st. And our next joyful celebration service will be Saturday the 4th of May at 5 p.m. And it being May 4th, we'll at least have um, a prelude from Star Wars. Um, May the 4th be with you, that kind of thing. Thank you. <laughs> and I think that's all the announcements I need to give this morning. Someone else asked if they could give one. Yes, Diane and Kathy. Oh, plants. Okay, this is the day you can take Easter lilies and any of the plants that are in front of the altar and on the reed table, the green plants back by the piano and up here at the lectern are Cam's personal ones, so please don't take those. So, take them. So these up front and up here and back? And in the windows. And in the windows, okay. Just not the piano ones or the ones up here by the lectern. The Easter lilies can go. All right. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Wednesday, I emailed out your quarterly reports for the first quarter. So if you didn't receive it, please let me know. I know there's several people we have trouble with their emails, and I handed theirs out this morning to them. But let me know if you didn't get your quarterly report, and I will print one up for you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Beth? Yep, I'll repeat it for you. I just want to give a special acknowledgement and thank you to Harry and to um, Sandra. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it doesn't smell like lilies in here. Usually there's a very strong smell. They individually removed the stamens and the pollen from every single lily before they were put out for Easter to be helpful to the allergies. So I just wanted to say thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. And now are there birthdays, anniversaries, travels, or other special occasions you'd like to share with the community in prayer? We'll do that one next Sunday. Travel. An anniversary. Okay. Well, if you will join me on page 831 in the Book of Common Prayer, we'll have our prayer for travelers. And then we'll have our prayer for the Frank and Beth's anniversary. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And an anniversary. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for Beth and Frank, for their anniversary as they celebrate another year of marriage. May they grow ever closer to your own heart as they grow ever closer to one another. We ask your blessing on them this day and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you.
Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice of love. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you 
to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, <coughs> awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gift you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and mart martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome at God's table. Please join with me in the prayer of spiritual communion in honor of those not able to be with us in person. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we gather at your table, whether virtually or physically. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Whether we receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood at Christ the King's altar, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, and you in us, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen.
Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 I never get to that part in.